Welcome back to the channel guys today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to use the NVIDIA app um, statistics overlay so if you like me and you like to see what's going on with your hardware while playing your game and uh, maybe you're not too sure how to set up an on-screen display with MSI Afterburner or a similar application like CapFrameX or something like that um, if you're on an NVIDIA GPU um, NVIDIA has made this very very simple and um, if you're not aware of it you will need the nvidia app um, for this to work now as you can see right now at the top of the screen you can see my fps next to that you can see the one percent lows you can see my gpu utilization you can see my gpu temperature my gpu core clock or voltage power draw memory clock cpu utilization render latency average render latency and the current um, DLSS um, model that I'm using which is currently DLSS 4.5 model M so all of this information is useful and I like it to present it to you guys I find it um, good because you can um, basically understand if something's working correctly or not for example the new DLSS 4.5 has many um, models that are available and this can confirm in real time if the model you selected is actually active. So for example, you can see it saying model M. If I was to then, let's just say I wanted to use DLAA or um, an older model like the LSS4, I could go to graphics. I can go down to uh, the DLSS preset and I can choose quality. Now this would put it into model K or at least it should so if I was to apply this now you can see that the model has now changed to model K which is DLSS 4.0 and the significance of this is it has um, a smaller impact on your GP performance it's less sharp but it's uh, more here towards higher resolution so it doesn't need to be as sharp so if you don't like the over sharpening of profile m or profile l you can always go to profile k by going to the balance store uh the dlaa uh, native preset so anyway that's mainly the uses of this let's actually get to how you actually do this so i'm going to close down red dead redemption now We're going to go back to my desktop. It's going to close down. Actually, I'll minimize the Rockstar Launcher. So once you have NVIDIA app installed, you can just right click and open the NVIDIA app. Now, first thing you need to do is make sure that the NVIDIA overlay is checked. You need this function to be working. This basically um, allows you to use the NVIDIA overlay system. Without this enabled, it, it just won't work. Also, you won't be able to use Shadow Play or previously known as Shadow Play, which is the recording function of the NVIDIA app. If you're wondering why your overlay is not showing up in your recording, you need to use like a third party application to record like, um, let's say OBS, or if you have a capture card and a second PC like me, this will obviously capture everything on your screen anyway. So um, you can press Alt Z together and this will bring up um, this menu which will allow you to go into the statistics so you click statistics here and then you have a box that says show statistics in heads up display now you got to check this then you also have below it configure heads up display so I'm going to show you how I got mine to look how I did so you can have this presented any way you want I've got this currently upper center you can have it upper right you can have it center you can have it bottom right bottom center you can even have it um any way you want and you don't necessarily have to have it all in one line you can have it linear like i have or you can have it double so it will have it will stack the information in two lines or you can have it stacked like i generally have my msr afterburner i'll show you how that looks so you'll have all the information in one row let me just remove my folders because it's a little bit of a distraction 
So right here, you can see um, it's all in one row. This is generally how I have my information when I'm run, I'm like making my videos. I find this more comfortable. But when I'm live streaming and I want things to be a little bit less invasive, I prefer to have it uh, more linear. So if I go back to statistics and I want to keep that same info, but I want things to look a little different, you can just go back to having it linear. So everything will be in one line and that way it's not obstructing um, maybe some gameplay elements. Maybe if you're playing FIFA, you don't want it to um, impede your score um, and just other things like that. So I find when I'm live streaming, this is more more comfortable for my viewers and also for myself. So there's a few things that you need to do um, to make this more comfortable in game. One is the kind of background. So if you go to configure heads up display, there's this thing called background opacity. So the more you, that number grows, the darker it is, so it eventually becomes opaque where there's no light coming through. But you want it to be about transparent. So you still want to see the elements behind uh, the, the, the font, but you still want enough so that that font is always visible. So I find 50% is fine. Um, you want the font to be as large as possible just for people who may be viewing on smaller devices. So I have large, you can have it at standard as well if you want. This isn't something you can tune any further. It will just adjust to whatever resolution you're playing. You can obviously change the color of your font. I prefer white, but you can have it green if you kind of want it to look more Nvidia-ish, I guess. But um, I think you can even customize your own color if you if you know how, but it does give you some presets. I think white's fine, to be honest. Now, you also have some elements that pop up when you're recording or, you know, when NVIDIA apps doing stuff and you can kind of position where that is. This won't get picked up in your recording anyway. So um, it's not a big deal. But if you're someone that cares about this stuff and you want it in a specific place, you can organize that. But that's not really that important. It gives you a preview here. So um, that's always useful. I like the way NVIDIA has actually added this. I think they've taken into consideration a lot of people actually like to to see what their, their shiny new graphics cards are doing. And it's a, it's a good addition. And AMD has something like this. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. Um, but that's basically how you do it. And um, it's very, very simple. Now I want to go into the statistics you can monitor. So I've got it at custom at the moment, but realistically you'll start off by seeing presets. So NVIDIA will give you the most basic FPS, which will only monitor your, your FPS and maybe your minimums. And then you have one called basics. So it will have your frame rate your GPU utilization, your CPU utilization, your average latency. You know, have another one called advanced where they'll give you frame rate, 1% lows, GPU temperature this time, CPU clock on voltage, and then even give you your VRAM clock and your um, GPU fan speed. So maybe most people will be happy with that, but you can also have the preset called DLSS will just give you pretty much everything in the DLSS suite. If it's using Ray reconstruction, what model, and what override settings you're using, your DLSS uh, override settings and model, your frame generation override settings and model, all of this information will be available to you if you need it. And you can just do custom like me where you choose what you want. So for me personally, I like the GPU utilization. I like having GPU temperature monitor, GPU clock, so your core clock. Me personally, I actually like to see my GPU voltage. This might not be interesting to everyone, but if you do undervolting, and you want to know um, what voltage your card is using at a specific clock, this is actually pretty useful to be able to visualize this. So for example, if you wanted to do an undervolt for your, I don't know, your RTX 1490 or your 5090, and you didn't want to go over 900, 0.900 volts, um, you could generally see what kind of core clock you're maintaining while you're, you're under that threshold. And that could be interesting to know more about stability um, GP power draw, which is or power consumption, which is one of the main ones. So you know how much your GPU is drawing at the time. Um, GPU fan speed, if you want to see your, your fan speed, this is also good. But I find with RPMs, it varies on, on each card. So if you're doing like 1600 RPM, um, that may sound a lot louder on a, a different cards. I don't really find RPM useful. I kind of prefer percentage, but that's the way they like to display it. Uh, VRAM clock, so this is your, your um, whatever your card's using, whether it's GDDR6, GDDR7, um, it will give you the clock speed it's running at. I don't know if this is the effective clock, possibly, um, but 
but it's what your GPU is running. You also have your CPU utilization, so it will give you a percentage of how much your CPU is being used under load. And that's pretty useful as well. Um, render latency, I find the average latency more useful because if you're using frame generation, this will still give you um, you know, some input latency information that's useful, whereas render latency doesn't really account for um, the, the AI generated frame. So average latency for me is probably more important, but if you want to see both of them together, there's no issue there. And then it has a few other things um, that you may be interested in, but generally that's all I care about. And finally, I like to know what DLSS model I'm running. So this super resolution model override is useful. You can just put that there and it will tell you what you're using. And that's it because there's only a certain amount of space you have and I don't want to use all of it. So I'm just going to put mine back to the way I like it. I think I just need to put mine back to upper center rather than upper left. And let's load up another game. So another shortcut that's useful is you can press Alt and R together and it will get rid of the overlay straight away. Say you wanted to just make it disappear. Press Alt and R again, it will return. So it's very, very convenient if you want to get rid of something. So I'm currently playing The Last of Us 2, or Part 2 Remastered, just to be specific. You see I'm getting over 270 FPS, and this is without using uh, frame generation. I'm using the new DLSS 4.5, so I'm actually using the performance preset, and things just look amazing. Amazingly sharp, actually. So I think in some games, the sharpening is a little bit too extreme, but it doesn't look too bad here. As you can see, the CPU utilization of mine, um, R9 9950X 3D is about 33 to 35%, which is useful. This game uses a lot of uh, shader caching and for our CPU with 16 cores and 16 threads, um, that's quite a lot for our in-game utilization. You can see my GPU is currently utilized at 98%. So it really indicates that there's no GPU bottleneck. It's, I would say, no CPU bottleneck rather. So the GPU is getting fully utilized. Um, let's, do I crouch? I haven't played this game in a while. Let's go to jump down here, crouch. You can also see that my um, GPU temperature is at 62 degrees and I'm drawing around 500 watts. So all of this information uh, to my viewers that are, that are interested in how the RTX 5090 performs in specific scenarios is useful. You can see I'm using just over 1.005 volts, so not a lot. Okay, what am I supposed to do here again? Let me get climb over. And the performance is just insane for this game. And it looks so good. I haven't actually tried the LSS 4.5 with this game yet, so this is me the first time seeing it. And honestly, it's so close to native now, it's actually ridiculous. So again, if you wanted to make some changes um, on the fly, you could just press Alt-Z, bring up the statistics, go to configure this heads-up display. Again, as I showed earlier, now you don't necessarily have to have linear, you can have stacked and I would put this in the upper left. Usually how I usually have my on-screen display, you can have it like this. If you're not happy to have everything um, showing um, across the top of the screen, you can put it anywhere you want and present it anywhere you want. This is generally how I have my stuff um, when I'm doing my videos. So this could be uh, something you can use um, if you're not against using the Nvidia app. Of course, it's exclusive to NVIDIA cards, but again, AMD has their own equivalent software. So hopefully this was useful. Um, if you have any more questions, just let me know. I'm always happy to help when I can. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.